What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Derm Collaborative. I'm Drew, I'm your host. I'm a dermatologist practicing in Kentucky and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss Kratom and how a recent case report suggests that it's capable of causing skin discoloration. Let's dive right in. Kratom, also known as Metragena speciosa, is a tropical evergreen tree native to Southeast Asia, which include countries like Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Myanmar. It's a plant belonging to the Rubiaceae family, which also includes the coffee tree. Its leaves and other plant parts are processed into powders, extracts, teas, tablets, and capsules that are ingestible. Kratom has been used as an herbal remedy in medicine since at least the 19th century. Its reported benefits include pain relief, reduction of anxiety, and stimulant properties, which may elevate mood and reduce fatigue. Kratom is also used to alleviate opioid withdrawal symptoms in individuals that abuse opioids or are addicted to opioids like heroin and morphine. Its effects on the body are mediated by its metabolically active alkaloids, which include metragenine and 7-hydroxymetragenine. These compounds bind to and activate the mu opioid and to a lesser extent the kappa opioid receptor. In the US, most forms of commercially available Kratom are powder supplements with suggested daily consumption values between 2-6 to six grams depending on the species of Kratom that's used. Kratom has been available in the U.S. since the early 2000s. Public awareness of Kratom has sharply increased over the last decade due to an increased number of Kratom-related toxicology reports. In 2016, the CDC issued a report which detailed the outcome of 660 calls to poison control centers across the U.S. 7% of these reports were associated with major adverse medical outcomes in which Kratom users developed life-threatening signs or symptoms and may have had some post-use residual disability. The exact nature of major adverse outcome was actually not described. One death was reported in an individual, but this individual was also concurrently taking Lamotrigine, which is an anticonvulsant, and Paroxetine, which is an antidepressant. Significant finding from this publication was that the risk of the severity of the outcome was correlated with repeated exposure to Kratom. Users of Kratom tend to be young to middle-aged adults that come from middle-income backgrounds that report use of Kratom to self-treat pain and emotional and mental conditions. As previously mentioned, negative side effects from Kratom are dose dependent, meaning the more you use, the more likely you are to have side effects. And the most commonly reported side effects include nausea, vomiting, constipation, and diarrhea. Other reported side effects include heart palpitations, also known as rapid heartbeat, shortness of breath, dizziness, drowsiness, irritability, fainting, and high blood pressure. Serious adverse effects have been reported with Kratom use. Liver injury is one of the more serious adverse effects. Exact estimates of liver injury are unknown, but seem to be uncommon. Presenting signs and symptoms of liver injury include abdominal discomfort, jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin and the whites of your eyes, itch, and dark urine. The latency period, also known as the time from ingestion to presentation of liver injury, ranged from 2 to 49 with an average of 21 days, according to one comprehensive review. In 2022, a case report was published that described a man who presented to a dermatology clinic with a hyperpigmented rash. And a hyperpigmentation simply means darkening of the skin. His hyperpigmented rash involved sun-exposed sites, also known as being photo-distributed. The man was middle-aged, Caucasian, and reported that he started consuming Kratom five years earlier in an attempt to wean himself from taking his prescription opioids. He ingested Kratom mixed with orange juice three to four times daily. We don't know the exact quantity that he took three to four times a day because it was not reported. He'd previously been addicted to using opioids for relief from chronic joint pain. He was otherwise healthy. According to the report, his exam was notable for hyperpigmented patches on his arms and face with a striking photo distribution. The man underwent skin biopsies, which showed deposits of red-brown pigment within histiocytes, which are tissue immune cells or tissue macrophages. The pigment was also deposited around dermal blood vessels and involving the dermal interstitium, which is the space between cells. There was little to no inflammation apart from the histiocytes. 
The pigment stained positively for Fontana Masson, which is a stain used to identify melanin, which is the pigment produced by melanocytes, which gives skin its color. The authors hypothesized that Kratom either causes melanocytes to pr produce more melanin through its effects on dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine pathways, or that the compounds in Kratom directly bind to, to melanin, forming a drug melanin complex, which itself deposits into the skin. We don't know anything about his long-term outcome because no follow-up beyond his initial presentation was provided. Hopefully the authors decide to follow the patient long-term and later report how he did. I think the key takeaways from all this information is, one, Kratom has some beneficial properties, otherwise people wouldn't be taking it. It seems to be able to relieve pain, elevate mood, and help people withdraw from opioids. Two, Kratom clearly has negative side effects on the body. It can negatively affect your heart, your liver, your GI tract, and now we know it can also negatively affect your skin. The negative effects of Kratom appear to be dose dependent, meaning the risk is greater with greater consumption of Kratom. Three, the effect on the skin can be serious. It may be permanent, but it is not life-threatening. There are some life-threatening skin rashes, but hyperpigmentation is not one of them. Rates of hyperpigmentation with Kratom use are unknown, but we can safely guess that it's probably very uncommon, given that this is the first report, despite Kratom being available for decades. We don't have follow-up from his outcome, but we can extrapolate this patient's potential outcome from similar cases of drug-induced photodistributed hyperpigmentation. Many other drugs can cause photodistributed hyperpigmentation. Drugs like minocycline, an antibiotic often given for acne, chemotherapies, hydroxychloroquine, which is an anti-malarial also used to treat autoimmune diseases, and certain drugs that act on the brain, like antidepressants and medications that affect your heart. In these drug-induced cases, once the discoloration occurs, if you keep taking the offending drug, it's likely to worsen and progress. If you discontinue the offending drug, it may not clear. It can take months, years, or persist indefinitely. So it's conceivable that this man who took Kratom may have permanent hyperpigmentation related to his Kratom use. We really didn't get into the legal issues behind Kratom, but it's important to note that Kratom is illegal in many countries, but the US is not one of them. It's legal to purchase Kratom in the US as long as you're 18 or older. In 2016, the DEA had intended to make Kratom a Schedule 1 substance. Schedule 1 means that the drug is considered dangerous, has no medical benefit, and should not be used under any circumstances. There was a big advocacy movement, including from the American Kratom Association, that prevented the DEA from scheduling Kratom as a controlled substance. The American Kratom Association's mission has been to keep Kratom legal in the U.S., and to ensure that what's commercially available is safe for consumption. If you want to learn more about the American Kratom Association, the link will be in included in the description. Well, that's it, guys. I do not endorse the use of Kratom. In fact, based on what I learned, I wouldn't use it myself at all. But it's ultimately your decision. If you enjoyed this video, learn something new, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and join me next week as we'll be learning more about your skin.